Hello YouTube, this is Alex from ThingsBoard. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use scheduler feature, which is the part of ThingsBoard Professional Edition. To make it easy and clear, as usual, I'll explain principles of the feature on the typical use cases and scenarios that you can implement using the scheduler feature. Imagine you want to update some single or multiple devices configuration automatically, without humans involving. For example, set target air conditioner temperature to 23 Celsius degrees at 6 pm after people went out from the office and turned off the air conditioner in the late evening. ThingsBoard has a special API to deliver attribute updates or, in the other words, configuration updates to devices. With Scheduler, you can send remote procedure calls to devices. We'll review the difference between attribute updates and commands later in this video tutorial. Let's take a brief look at the architecture of ThingsBoard Scheduler. As you can see on the diagram, there are two ways how you can schedule some events – via the REST API or via ThingsBoard UI. Scheduler UI component is available for the tenant administrator. Similar, Tenant Administrator is able to create a dashboard and allows customers to schedule their own events. There are three ThingsBoard built-in events in version 2.1. These built-in events are Report Generation, Attribute Updates and RPC Commands. I'd like to briefly explain the difference between Attribute Updates and RPC Commands. Attribute Updates are persisted in a database, so even if the device was offline, once it gets back online, it will be able to receive the update. RPC is not persisted in the database and will be delivered only to online devices. That's why RPC is more lightweight and suits best for some interactive commands from UI. Let's proceed to the hands-on part to learn how to configure all types of commands via the user interface. I'll use Cloud ThingsBoard in this tutorial. You are able to sign up for a free trial on cloud.thingsboard.io. Let's create a device group and add there two devices, air conditioner A and B in this group. I'm going to use specific device type, which is generally good practice. Let's set two server attributes, expose and y pose for each device. We'll need them to show the locations of devices on the image map digit. We've developed a special script that will emulate particular air conditioner behavior. Now I'm going to launch this script for the air conditioner A. Copy paste in the device access token and launch the script. Note that I specified the host name of the ThingsBoard server as a first parameter and the access token as a second parameter. Let's finally configure some scheduler event. Go into the scheduler tab. I'm going to create new event by clicking on the plus button. Let's populate the name of the event. Turn air conditioning on. Update attributes as event type. Target is a group of entities from a previous step called air conditioners. Now it's important to select shared attributes in the entity attribute scope. Configure target state to on and target temperature to 23. Note that we use attribute names with target prefix. This is optional but helps to distinct configure attribute from the current attribute. 
Our air conditioner emulator is configured to listen to those two attributes and report its state changes when he receives notification. If we configure the attribute to be changed at 7.30 am, it will change in a database. All online devices will receive the notification, some offline devices will not receive it, but they can query the current attribute state when they reconnect to things board. Now let's select the time when this event will happen. We'll use time in the nearest future, basically within next 60 seconds. We can also configure this event to repeat it on business days. Let's change the end on date as well. So we have configured ThingsBot scheduler to turn on the air conditioning for all devices in the group. Check it out. Event has arrived to our air conditioner. Now we can navigate to the latest telemetry tab for this air conditioner and see that the device has acknowledged the update and pushed current temperature and current state telemetry. Let's see the same tab for the offline device. The shared attribute update is also present, but no new telemetry arrived because device is offline. Before proceeding to the next step, please download a dashboard specially prepared for this video. I'm going to navigate to dashboards and import my dashboard. As you can see, it allows As you can see, it allows us to review the current and target state of our air conditioners. We also use the state information to change the icons on the map. There are three air conditioner icons – offline, online but turned off and online turned on air conditioner. We also have a target firmware version and current firmware version on the dashboard. We'll use this to track firmware update process a bit later in this video. Easy enough? Continue. We'll schedule the update of a software version also to the nearest future. Let's call new scheduler event. I'm going to select attribute updates event type. Target is air conditioners group. Configuring target firmware version to 2.2. Note that Things Board allows you also push URL to the firmware and file checksum. I'll show how to in some new videos. Don't miss that, subscribe our channel and stay tuned. I have to mention that since Things Board is a server side IoT platform, we believe that implementation of a particular software update process is up to you. Things Board is responsible for delivering notification that the update is available and raising alarms if the device wasn't updated. So our device received the notification and reported current firmware version to the server. Just check telemetry of the device. However, the offline device hasn't reported the firmware version yet. Why don't we go further and make custom event? For example, to trigger validation of the firmware update. I'll call it firmware update check. This event will send custom message to the rule engine and will trigger the check of firmware version. I'm typing firmware update check. I'm going to use same devices group and select message type of our custom event. The message body will be empty, but you can put any JSON here. Setting up this event to be triggered in few minutes from now. Meanwhile, we have to go to rule chains feature. Please download and import the firmware update check rule chain. It generates the alarm if the current firmware version differs from a target one. The rule chain also clears the alarm if device reports up to date firmware version. Take a look on the rule chain. As you can see, it analyzes the incoming message type. 
If the type is firmware update check, then the message is originated by the scheduler. We duplicate this message to all devices in the group and then patch current and target firmware version. Based on this information, rule chain decides whether to raise alarm or not, similar when the telemetry with current firmware version arrives to the server, we execute the comparison of the version again and make clear the alarm. Also, depending on the comparison result, we push firmware sync telemetry parameter with a relevant value. Do not forget to apply changes. Then we go to the root rule chain and adding a rule node that we've just created. Firmware update check. Now we have new telemetry data available. Let's wait till the firmware update check event is triggered and navigate to our dashboard. OK. The first air conditioner has the same firmware version and firmware version status is sync. However, the second air conditioner is out of sync. If we drill down to this air conditioner details, we can see that the new alarm is generated for this device. I launched the emulator for the second air conditioner. This basically simulates the device goes online. I'm going to copy-paste device access token for air conditioner B. Now we can see from the log that the device receives the update notification and reports new firmware updates available on the dashboard. Alarm is now in clear complicated step in this tutorial. Now let's see how to schedule the RPC call to device. Creating a new scheduler event for the nearest future. I select device group and type method name report status. We have programmed our emulator to report latest status in response to the RPC call with exact method name. Let's save the event and see how RPC request is handled in the air conditioner. Note that all offline devices will not receive this request when they reconnect the things board. Voila! If something went wrong, try to go through this tutorial again. Also, do not hesitate, leave your questions in comments. I work on new tutorials. My next guide is about reporting future. Subscribe this channel and discover new IoT possibilities with ThingsBoard. And do not forget, appreciate our team and our product with forks and stars on GitHub.